Deku can't believe what just happened to Bakugo. Shigaraki, being the biggest threat to the entire world of My Hero Academia, has awakened at 100% completion of All for One. And the scariest thing about Shigaraki's awakening is that he not only has full access to every quirk in All for One at its fullest limits, but he also has the base strength of Prime All Might. So with Bakugo challenging the overwhelming power of Shigaraki head on, what happened to him was basically inevitable. And when Deku finds out the tragedies that happened to Bakugo, he will undoubtedly go berserk and try to avenge his friend. This is My Hero Academia chapter 359 titled Our School. The chapter starts off with us finding out from a recording that the UA Flying Coffin is continuously losing altitude. Due to Shigaraki's body mutation making him so large, he's basically too heavy for the coffin to carry, forcing it to slowly fall down and foreshadowing an eventual crash. And this would be horrible for the heroes, as the original plan was to use the electromagnetic barriers to limit Shigaraki's mobility due to him having all might levels of strength and speed. And if ever the UA coffin crashes, that would undoubtedly mean the end of everyone's life in that fight. The people shown to be recording this information is none other than the UA management course, who explains that even though the electromagnetic barriers keep Shigaraki caged, it also makes it impossible to communicate conventionally with the outside world, which turned out to be the main reason for the management course to record everything that has been going on. When confronted that the management course shouldn't be making documentaries and should instead help prevent the UA coffin from falling, the management course class president claims that there is no better time than now to be recording. He continues to say that every crucial battle up until now has been extensively filmed and documented for the sole purpose of producing heroes, and that the main job for the management course is to bring heroes closer to society. The legacy of All Might could be drastically altered if not for his legendary video saving over 100 endangered citizens. And Kamui Wood's hero status would be nearly non-existent had it not been for his tear-jerking documentary. Creating the stories of heroes through videos and documentaries are the culmination of the management course's studies over the past three years, so that they can be the ones who tell the story of how the heroes, no, how everyone won this fight. With the conclusion of that conversation, we head back to Bakugo versus All for Shigaraki, and after activating his area-heavy suppressing armor strafing panzer, Bakugo charges at All for Shigaraki, completely catching him off guard and exploding his face with his ultimate attack, Howitzer Impact Cluster Bomb. This attack was powerful enough to completely break through the electromagnetic barrier meant to hold Shigaraki. It was able to shake the entire UA coffin and was even intense enough to almost make Monoma blink even though he's a long distance away from the fight. Complaints about Bakugo's massive explosion came from the support crew in charge of maintaining the power within the UA coffin, where a third year student questions if Bakugo was trying to blow up the entire stage and further threatens Bakugo's life if he accidentally burnt the hair on Nedri Hado's head. But Kaminari confirmed that everything will be alright, and that despite his appearance, Bakugo is quite meticulous, alluding to the times where Bakugo would scold him for not resting his left hands on the table. But what Kaminari is really trying to say is that Bakugo isn't the type of guy to disregard his surroundings in a fight. And with everyone having so much confidence in Bakugo's abilities, a different reality would be presented to Bakugo firsthand. A high condensed blast, maximizing the energy output while avoiding any damage to the environment. Truly wonderful. That's why I had to break it. In the midst of Bakugo's attack, all for Shigaraki focused on Bakugo's right arm, redirecting the blast slightly and completely destroying the arm of Bakugo ultimately making him useless in the remainder of this fight. And as if breaking his arm wasn't enough to damage Bakugo, all for Shigaraki would look Bakugo in the eyes and say that he stands by what he told him last time. I continue to have no interest in you. Bakugo, with an intense and bloodied expression on his face, swings hopelessly in the hands of Shigaraki as Shigi continues to mutate his body and attack the other heroes around. Best genius Mirko and Edshot does their best to dodge all for Shigaraki's attack, but all Shigaraki can do at this point is look disappointed at the heroes and mock them for thinking that the best course of action to stop him was to get close and personal. And in the blink of an eye, he speed blitzes Mirko, Best Genius, and Edshot 
knocking them all out of the way. All while saying that the only thing that is going to get them is a first-hand taste of what it's like to get smashed by the powers that rival All Might. And while slowly walking towards Bakugo, Shigaraki would say words that could possibly bring his eventual death. It's not your ideas or your dreams that I'm interested in, Katsuki Bakugo. The only thing that ever piqued my interest in you is the fact that you are Midoriya's best friend. Calling all the way back to his original encounter with Deku in the USJ, where he declared that Deku would die by his hands, all the way to the events of the forest raid in Kamino, where Shigaraki devised a plan to single out and capture Bakugo to join the League of Villains. All of that was done not because he was interested in Bakugo, but so Shigaraki could get Deku in a position to eventually kill him. Bakugo can do nothing but watch and feel weak, questioning if the gap between him and Shigaraki is truly that vast. Concerned about Bakugo's life, Aizawa screams for Mandalay to tell him the status of Deku. The last time we saw Deku was him flying to the UA coffin, where he was then interrupted by a mysterious group of people who could either be allies coming to help or enemies coming to strike him down. Mandalay says that she's not able to reach him anymore, and when Aizawa brings up that she was just in contact with Deku a minute ago, Mandalay mentions that even outside the barrier, the electromagnetic waves are messing with the transmission signals and that all she is getting are static responses. And looking even more worried for Bakugo's life, Aizawa Sensei pleads for best genus, or for Miracle, or for Headshot, or for someone to please go save Bakugo. Because he still needs to graduate from UA so he can aim to be the number one hero. And as we see, Shigaraki is menacingly walking away from a destroyed UA High. And through the rubble caused by this fight, we see Tamaki Amajiki, aka Sun Eater, start to stand up. And he immediately tells Nejire Hado that even though they are officially graduated from UA, he still wants to have a proper graduation ceremony. And that after this fight is over, they'll get Principal Nezu to throw one for them. As they get ready for what could be their final battle, Sun Eater then asks everyone if they think they will make it out alive. And with the best boy Lemillion permeating from the ground, he says that he doesn't know, but at least they will be able to keep everyone safe until Deku gets to the fight, setting up what could be the most tragic death in the entire series. So now we have to ask, where is Deku? What is going to happen to the heroes? And will the big three make it out of this battle alive? Wing is zone every single day.